Love's Parade. Twenty years ago, firing ceased. Twenty years ago, a rejoicing world saw the end of its most terrible carnage. Today, people are again plagued by unsound theories, the desire for conquest. Again, the world is offered the false idea that might makes right. The tragic surrender of Austria to the German military machine commenced when the former Austrian Chancellor Kurt von Schuschnigg failed to satisfy the demands of the German Führer. Immediately following a meeting at Hitler's chalet in the Bavarian mountains, Schuschnigg, defying Hitler, said, Austria will stand or fall with a special German mission. And he added, we are a Christian state, a German state and a free state. And in this country, everyone is equal before the law. But within a few short hours, all peoples around the globe were electrified to learn that what Bismarck dreamed of but could not accomplish came to a thundering realization with Germany's lightning-like invasion of Austria. From Innsbruck to Brenner Pass, Austrian independence was crushed beneath the heels of goose-stepping Nazi legions. The hand of friendship is extended with a mailed fist, with the now historic lifting of the border gate, the tragic symbol of surrender. Millions jammed country lanes and city streets to gain a glimpse of the man who proclaimed himself a leader of a peaceful country of seven million. Here we witness the history-making march that has shaken the entire world. True, a peaceful invasion, but one of submission rather than a triumphant conquest by the Nazi legion. Through the tranquil, colorful town of Lentz, march and ride the army of gray-clad invaders heralding the approach of the new dictator, returning to his native land for the first time in 24 years. In Vienna, city of song and music known around the world, 500,000 pack the streets while buildings are covered with the symbols of the German Reich. With six tanks leading a two-mile-long procession of Reich Army and stormtroopers, and with German bombers patrolling the skies, Adolf Hitler, modern Caesar, enters the land of his birth in his modern chariot of triumph. demonstration was an organized one. Stormtroopers and Austrian Nazis were everywhere, stimulating a peace-loving people in cheering and accepting the self-styled leader. Here, might dominates right. Here, the same crowds that only yesterday hailed Schusnig's promise of continued liberty, today cheer Hitler. Hysteria proclaims the triumph of a dictator and the death of a nation.
prances to and fro on the balcony of Vienna's Imperial Palace, screaming his challenge. 75 million people in one nation. No force on earth can shake us. Dictator Hitler, with the speed of a thunderbolt, has added to Germany 32,377 square miles, nearly 7 million subjects, and lands rich in agriculture and mineral resources. But what has he added to his stature in the world? Czechoslovakia has always maintained its independence from aggression for its 14,700,000 people. President Benesh, brilliant diplomat and keen student of military affairs, promptly reasserts Czechoslovakia's determination to defend itself against any aggressors with its army of 180,000 men fit and ready, one of Europe's best trained armies. Twice-appointed Premier Leon Blum, already harassed with unstable internal conditions and plagued with industrial strife, is gravely concerned about the extension of Europe's frontiers, which draw more closely an iron ring around the country cursed with discord and dissension. In Russia, Iron Man Stalin pledges his mighty air and land forces to France for the protection of Czechoslovakia, should ruthless conquests continue. England, at heart a peace-loving nation, looks with gravest alarm upon the European situation. Neville Chamberlain, experienced diplomat and able prime minister, employs every diplomatic approach to maintain peace. Anthony Eden, England's youngest foreign secretary in 84 years, resigned his post in disagreement with the demands and policies of rulers of totalitarian nations. Britain and its lands beyond the seas pray for peace, but must prepare against possible aggression. Italy, pivot of the Berlin-Rome-Tokyo axis, sanctions the Austrian invasion, but immediately pledges protection of the Italo-Austrian border. Following Hitler's march to Vienna, Il Duce, speaking of Italy's frontiers, announced before his chamber of deputies, we will not discuss them, we will defend them. United States Secretary of State Cordell Hall speaks. Developments of recent years, the startling events of the past weeks, offer a tragic demonstration of how quickly the contagious scourge of treaty breaking and armed violence spread from one region to another. For the sake of the best interests of our people, we must maintain our strength, our courage, our moral standards, our influence in world affairs, and our participation in efforts toward world progress and peace. Today, after 20 years, the world is again menaced with startling displays of armed strength, of marching men, of giant cannons, of swooping planes. These are not symbols of progress. All decent, peace-loving people in every quarter of the globe know that might does not make right. Thank you.